The battle for Los Angeles tips off on Thursday night with a rematch between number eight UCLA traveling to the Galen Center to face crosstown rival USC. And I'm your host, Scott Phillips, here with an Outside Shots college basketball betting preview. But before we dive into this Pac-12 matchup, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell to get alerts for our latest YouTube content. We have great action coming to you from the NBA with game picks and player props. We've got NFL Conference Championship Weekend and, of course, the Farmers Insurance Open out at Torrey Pines in San Diego. So much more great coverage all over our YouTube channel. Also, be sure to visit the lines.com where we have the latest in terms of offerings from multiple books. You can check your lines and price shop there. We will have expert analysis and written pieces on things as well. And of course, you can get commentary and plays from our experts. And be sure to also join our thriving Discord community, which for the college basketball community is particularly busy this time of year. We have a lot of members in our community who have their own insights and tips. They will update you on injury news and notes. And that is the place to find picks from myself and my Outside Shots co-host, Eli Hershkovich, when we make live picks into the Discord. So before we we get into that be sure to follow us on twitter at the lines us and myself scott phillips on twitter at phillips hoops so you know diving into this matchup this is a fascinating one for me because these two teams matched up already once this season with ucla prevailing 60 to 58 on january 5th at home at poly pavilion and for this one this is a rematch at usc which is a ucla minus five lean to start now most of the books have dropped UCLA to minus four and a half already. The over under is trending at 131 and a half after the sluggish, low scoring first outing that these two teams put on. You can find this matchup 9 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN2. And for me, the key in this one is a couple of uh, star freshmen who will be entering their rotations after not playing in the first matchup when these two teams faced each other. For UCLA, they finally get dynamic freshman wing Amari Bailey back. He's been missing for the better part of January due to a foot injury as, after uh, Oscar Shibwe from Kentucky stepped on his foot. Uh, Davis, or I'm sorry, Bailey attempted to give it a go in the next game against UC Davis. He had discomfort in the foot. They shut him down. Head coach Mick Cronin saying to the media this week that he is expected to play on Thursday. Also, uh, a positive in this is that Bailey was seen going through a full practice with UCLA by the media on Wednesday. So it looks like he has the green light. We're not sure how many minutes he might play. If he enters the starting lineup, that could swing David Singleton back into the dynamic sixth man role that he was playing at the start of the season. That should give UCLA's bench a gigantic boost and obviously gives UCLA's starting lineup the added firepower of Bailey as well. Now for USC, they get backup big man Vincent Iwuchi Chukwu into the mix. He's currently on a minutes restriction after uh, collapsing due to an unfortunate cardiac episode this summer. Uh, you know, Andy Enfield's defense was basically expecting Iwu Chukwu to be on the interior. Uh, kind of swapping roles with Josh Morgan during the season. If you look at Andy Enfield defenses of the past, whether they had guys like Onyeko Okongwu or Evan Mobley, Iwuchuku kind of fits that five-star mold of a center who can rim run, he can protect the rim, he's athletic, and he gives USC another dynamic of having a quality big coming off the bench who can produce. Uh, that was evident in USC's win over Arizona State over the weekend, in which Iwuchuku had a breakout game with 12 points and seven rebounds coming off the bench. So with USC now having its two big man rotation that they believed that they would have at the start of the season, they can play even more aggressively on the defensive end. They can pack the paint even more. And Morgan, who himself is a former Big West uh, defensive player of the year at Long Beach State, can be more aggressive and not be fearful of foul problems. So for me, let's take a look a little bit at this first matchup. Again, it was 60 to 58 UC 
UCLA winning at home. But one of the weird things about this matchup is that UCLA built an 18 point halftime lead. Uh, They were really dominating this one. They hit a ton of outside shots early. The USC ball pressure was not really phasing them at all. And it looks like the, uh, you know, this would be a blowout at Pauley Pavilion, but USC had other ideas with a tremendous second half, particularly on the defensive end. They basically shut down everything that the Bruins were trying to run. Jaime Jaquez was the only UCLA player to even make a field goal in the second half until Jalen Clark knocked down the game-winning three-pointer on a second-chance opportunity with 15 seconds left to give UCLA that two-point victory. So I'm going to start with that because I think it's interesting that USC made the necessary adjustments to slow down this UCLA offense for the second half. Obviously, this USC defense is geared towards shutting down things in the paint and allowing uh, opponents to shoot three pointers uh, at times when they want to. And, you know, for me, this UCLA team is dangerous as a matchup for USC because they can knock down three pointers. This is a team that's top 100 in the country in three point percentage at 35%. They've got multiple guys who can space the floor, including Tiger Campbell at point, the aforementioned David Singleton off the bench, and even a little bit of Amari Bailey, who is returning as well. So again, USC has faced some very elite defenses this season. They went to overtime against Tennessee. They beat Auburn at home. Those are both top 20 defenses. UCLA carrying a top 20 defense as well. But again, I think the difference between UCLA and Tennessee and Auburn is that the Bruins are going to make up for it by hitting three pointers on the other end of the floor. So for me, I think that UCLA with Bailey back in the lineup, a much more interesting and dynamic offense. UC, USC for me does not have that much offensive firepower. We talked about how in, in the Arizona preview, how they can get very, very hot from three point range in certain games but most games they tend to hover around the 25% mark from three-point range with a UCLA defense that is one of the best in the country at limiting good three-point looks. I don't like USC's offense to generate a lot of scoring opportunities on the perimeter. So again, I think UCLA is able to maybe control this game offensively, kind of similar to last game and maybe maintain things from there. The Amari Bailey presence in the lineup is going to help release a lot of pressure off of Jaime Jaquez. It's going to open up opportunities because Bailey can get downhill and create off the drive and find guys as a passer on the perimeter. And again, I think that this UCLA team is elite. They're coming off of a loss to Arizona. They're trying to maintain their strength atop the Pac-12. And this would be a huge victory sweeping rival USC to position themselves to stay atop the Pac-12 for the rest of the season. So for me, even though these numbers dipped a little bit at the outset, going down to minus four and a half, I'm taking UCLA minus 4.5 here. I think the Bruins have too much offensive firepower for USC to keep up with. I think in this rivalry matchup where these two teams know each other so well, and it's going to be a slow grinded out game that UCLA's talent will prevail, particularly with Bailey returning back to the lineup. And again, I think that that UCLA is now in position to kind of comfortably ride the Pac-12 roller coaster the rest of the way as long as they get this win. They already have their road matchup done at Arizona. They went to Arizona State and won that game. They faced USC twice. There's not a lot of other opportunities for teams to pick off UCLA if they get this matchup tonight. So I'm taking UCLA minus four and a half. Their offense to me does too much in this one. And I think this will be a fun rematch regardless of what happens. Keep it to outside shots. Our college basketball Basketball betting podcast. We'll have more episodes in the coming weeks from myself and my co host Eli Hershkovich. Also, keep it to our YouTube channel and join our Discord. And be sure to follow us on Twitter at The Lines US. And for myself, I'm Scott Phillips at Phillips Hoops. Thanks again for joining us. UCLA minus four and a half is my pick. Be sure to join us for more videos, more betting previews as we break down things towards March Madness. 